The first Carmel Bach Festival took place in 1935. It was four concerts in four days. But it's a real oversimplification to say that the festival was simply founded in 1935. In fact, that first festival was the result of several years of hard work by two extraordinary visionary people. And their story is a fascinating one. Ethel Adele Denny, known as Dean Denny, was born in 1885 on a ranch in a remote, roadless area of Siskiyou County in extreme northern California. Her father homesteaded there in 1852. She was tall and lanky and spent her childhood on horseback herding cattle. Dean Denny graduated Phi Beta Kappa from the University of California in Berkeley in 1907 and became an English teacher and choir director in a fine San Francisco high school. She was also a brilliant pianist who specialized exclusively in extremely avant-garde modern music. And in her 30s, she gave the American premiere of the first work of atonal 12-tone music by the revolutionary Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg. Hazel Watrous was born in 1885 and grew up in Santa Cruz, California. Her father was a photographer with the Vacation Photography Studio concession on the boardwalk in Capitola. Hazel attended the San Jose Teachers College, now San Jose State University, and graduated in 1903. She did further study at the California School of Fine Arts, now known as the San Francisco Art Institute. Hazel worked as a high school art teacher in Alameda, California, and traveled occasionally to Los Angeles to design sets and programs and posters for theaters and theater productions. In 1920, Dean Denny quit her high school teaching job to devote her time to piano teaching and piano playing. She taught in a studio at Sutter and Market Street in San Francisco. The same year, Hazel quit her high school teaching job to devote her time to art and theater design. And as fate would have it, they moved into the same small apartment building in San Francisco. In early 1921, they met and fell in love. They would spend the next 33 years together until Hazel's death in 1954. Dean and Hazel formed a lasting personal and professional partnership and became a creative entity known far and wide as Denny Watrous. In 1922, they moved to a large third floor gallery atop a huge Victorian mansion in San Francisco where they produced concerts and art exhibits and puppet shows and poetry and dramatic readings. In 1922, while they were still busy in San Francisco, they began work on a cottage in Carmel, doing most of the labor on the basic structure themselves. They moved to Carmel in 1923 and made it their home and never left. People were fascinated with Hazel's design of their house, and within a few years, Denny Watrous had designed three dozen houses here in Carmel by the Sea. In 1926, they converted a private home at the corner of San Carlos and 4th Street into an art gallery, which became Carmel's first public art gallery. In 1927, they produced an entire season of plays in the original theater of the Golden Bough on Ocean Avenue. Also in 1927, they founded the Carmel Music Society, which has been presenting great classical musicians in concert here every year since 1927. In the 1930s, they founded the Troopers of the Gold Coast, a theater company that produced 19th century melodramas in California's first theater, a historic adobe building in Monterey. They also managed a major concert series in the San Jose Civic Auditorium, where they booked the likes of Arta Rubinstein and Yasha Heifetz and Marian Anderson. But best of all, they founded the Carmel Bach Festival. In fact, it took them half a decade to do it. Dean and Hazel were impresarios. They made things happen, and they did it their way. In 1930, they discovered a new string quartet from Oregon, and they booked them for a residency in Carmel, a series of concerts with open rehearsals. The quartet members wanted one concert to be a concerto program for the individual players in the quartet, and for that, they needed an orchestra. So in 1931, Dean Denny and Hazel Watrous created an orchestra of local townspeople. They hired the cellist from that string quartet to lead them. His name was Michel Pena, 
and he had been principal cellist of the Philadelphia Orchestra under Leopold Stokowski and principal cellist of the San Francisco Symphony under Alfred Hertz. Pena took up residency here in Carmel for a decade, and without him, Dean and Hazel would not have been able to achieve their goal of a festival. The orchestra was small and ragtag. On a good night, the rehearsal would include five or six violins, two or three violas, maybe one or two cellos, perhaps a double bass, clarinet, trumpet, and always a piano to play the part of the instruments that weren't there that night. They called it the Monterey Peninsula Orchestra, and it is not the ancestor of the present-day Monterey Symphony. It is the ancestor of the Carmel Bach Festival Orchestra. From 1931 to 1935, this orchestra gave a dozen concerts on its own, along with a chorus that was formed in 1933. They rehearsed and performed in a building still standing on Dolores Street today. Then it was known as the Denny Watrous Gallery and is now the Winfield Gallery. The interior of the gallery has a small stage that was built in 1930 by Dean and Hazel for their own concerts and performances in that venue. In that gallery and in several other venues in town, Hazel and Dean's orchestra and chorus gave a dozen concerts, culminating in a landmark performance of the Rossini Stabat Mater for orchestra, chorus, and soloists in March of 1934. After the performance, Dean Denny was quoted in the newspaper as saying that the following year, Carmel would see a festival. During these several years, every rehearsal was open to the general public, and this built enormous enthusiasm in the community. Friends and family came to the rehearsals and the concerts, and the ongoing musical project that Hazel and Dean were producing became a source of enormous pride for everyone in Carmel-by-the-Sea. Back in 1935, it was only a coincidence they happened to pick Bach for that first festival. 1935 happened to be the 250th anniversary of Bach's birth, and it was being celebrated all around the world, so they celebrated it here in Carmel as well. They actually expected to give a Mozart festival in 1936, but they got hooked on Bach, and here we are. The Carmel Bach Festival has been evolving through its entire life. Its first three seasons, 1935, 1936, and 1937, were led by a total of four different conductors. In 1935, the great American composer Ernst Bacon and the Italian conductor Gastone Usigi led four main concerts, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. In 1936, a Russian-American violinist from Philadelphia, Sasha Yakobinov, conducted five concerts, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. In 1937, Michel Pena, the distinguished Dutch cellist who had helped to form the Bach Festival Orchestra, conducted five concerts and added two organ recitals at All Saints Church. And then in 1938, a dynamo from Italy, Gastone Assigli, returned to the podium and a few years later was promoted from festival conductor to festival music director. But he still had to answer to Dean and Hazel, who ran everything as managing producers and made up the occasional deficit out of their own pockets. Hazel died in 1954, and Gastone Usili died the following year. For Usili's successor, Dean Denny chose an extraordinary young Hungarian named Sándor Shalgo. It was Shalgo who converted the festival from a local amateur event to a major professional festival. When he arrived, there were only seven concerts, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, seven concerts because the Sunday concert was played twice on the same day. Everybody worked for free. Only the conductor was paid. Locals volunteered and a few professionals in the orchestra donated their services in return for train fare, room, and board. In the 1960s, Shandor Shalgo created a paid professional orchestra and a paid professional chorale of 28 singers. By this time, the festival was nine concerts in 10 days. With Dean Denny's encouragement, Shandor Shalvo instituted what he called experimental programming and broadened the festival's repertoire to nearly five centuries of music from the 15th to the 20th century. He also established the tradition of performing on Wednesdays at Carmel Mission Basilica. And by the time he retired, the festival was three weeks long with an afternoon chamber music recital on every day. In 1991, Chandor Shalgo retired after 35 years as the festival music director. I sang the evangelist in the performances of the St. Matthew Passion he conducted that season, 
And I'll never forget the final moment in the third performance, after the final chord died away, before turning to face the applauding audience. Shandor Shalgo reverently closed the score of the St. Matthew Passion for the final time. It was his last appearance as conductor anywhere. His successor, Bruno Weil, brought more 18th century players and instruments to the orchestra, and he was a central figure in the mid-90s in the movement to rebuild our concert hall into the new magnificent building that it now is. Our current music director, Paul Goodwin, began his tenure in 2011. And so I've had the pleasure of working with three festival music directors in my 29 seasons with this festival. It's hard to imagine that the eminent orchestra and professional choral ensemble you hear at the Carmel Bach Festival these days could have had their roots in that ragged group of amateurs in the 1930s. For it all, we need to thank Dean Denny and Hazel Walker.